Welcome back. My name is Ant Hartz, and today is day 112 of 365 of studying and reading the Bible. And today we're reading from 2 Samuel chapter 17 through 18. And you already know what to do. Go ahead and hit the like button so that the word of God can spread to more people. And I am... I'm just hyped. I don't know. I'm on fire for Jesus. <laughs> I don't know about y'all. Today is just one of those days where I'm I'm realizing that there's so much to be grateful for, even when you're not feeling or doing great. You know what I mean? Like even when there's things that you could be complaining about, when life isn't, you know, it's not feeling like you're living in a in that blessing that we all kind of want. We all want to feel like we're always winning. Even when you don't necessarily feel like you're winning, you are, you're a winner. Even if it doesn't feel like you're winning, you're still a winner. And it's just one of those days where like, before I go to work or before I do what I have to do, I just, I try to get myself in this, this sense of gratitude and, and, and not just taking what I've been blessed with for granted, not, and just, just really, being thankful for everything that God has given me and, and being obedient to everything that he's doing in my life as well. Um, so yeah, I just want to share that with you to give you just a little more motivation um, and not even motivation, but more like to encourage you as you go in it through any of the things that you may be going through. And everybody's life isn't, everybody's not going through a storm right now or any tough situation. So I don't always like to feel like I'm always speaking that over people, but it's just sometimes things aren't necessarily, sometimes things don't have to be going bad to feel like you're not blessed. Yeah. Sometimes things don't have to be feeling like it's, things don't have to feel like it's going bad to feel like you're not blessed. So I just, I want to make sure that all of my brothers and sisters in Christ are just uplifted in the Lord. And let's get to the prayer. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, God, we're just so thankful for this divine appointment, Lord. We're just so thankful to be able to come to you, to be able to take all of cast all of our worries and our cares onto you, God, for you care for us. Lord, I just thank you so much for everything that you are doing, have done, and will do in the future. And Lord, if you don't do anything else, you have truly done enough. And God, I just I just ask that in everything that you do and everything that I do and everything that the people, all the watchers, all the watchers and listeners on today, everything that we do, we just do it and we do it for your glory, God, not for our gain, but for your glory. And that what we do isn't done in vain and that we take all of the gifts that you have blessed us with and we give them back to you, God. God, I just thank you for just all of the conviction that we get from reading the word, God, the word is meant to change us. And Lord, I just ask that you allow every listener reader here to accept what you have for them today. You accept, they accept the word and they just allow it to do, to do a new thing in their life. They allow you to transform them, to renew them, to restore them and to bring them closer and closer to you, God. As we draw near to you, God, we just ask that you draw near to us. This and many more blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. In chapter 17, Absalom seeks advice from two advisors on how to best David and his men. Ahithophel said to Absalom, Now, let me choose 12,000 men, and I will arise and pursue David tonight. In verses 1 through 14, Absalom and all of the men of Israel all agree with Hushai's advice, but didn't know that Hushai is actually loyal to David. I will come upon him while he is weary and weak and make him afraid. And all the people who are with him will flee, and I will strike only the king. Then I will bring back all the people to you. When all return, except the man whom you seek, all the people will be at peace. And the saying pleased Absalom and all the elders of Israel. Then Absalom said, now call Hushai, the archite also, and let us hear what he says too. 
And when Hushai came to Absalom, Absalom spoke to him. Ahithophel has spoken in this manner. Shall we do as he says? If not, speak up. The advice that Ahithophel has given is not good at this time. For you know your father and his men, that they are mighty men, and they are enraged in their minds like a bear robbed of her cubs in the field. And your father is a man of war and will not camp with the people. Surely by now he is hidden in some pit or in some other place. And it will be, when some of them are overthrown at the first, that whoever hears it will say, There is a slaughter among the people who follow Absalom. And even he who is valiant, whose heart is like the heart of a lion, will melt completely. For all Israel knows that your father is a mighty man, and those who are with him are valiant men. Therefore, I advise that all Israel be fully gathered to you, from Dan to Beersheba, like the sand that is by the sea for multitude, and that you go to battle in person. So we will come upon him in some place where he may be found, and we will fall on him as the dew falls on the ground. And of him and all the men who are with him, there shall not be left so much as one. Moreover, if he is withdrawn into a city, then all Israel shall bring ropes to that city, and we will pull it into the river until there is not one small stone found there. So Absalom and all the men of Israel said, the advice of Hushai the Archite is better than the advice of Ahithophel. For the Lord had purpose to defeat the good advice of Ahithophel, to the intent that the Lord might bring disaster on Absalom. In verses 15 through 22, Hushai informs David's men about Absalom's pursuit, and David and his men escape across the Jordan for safety. Then Hushai said to Zadok, and Abiathar the priests. Thus and so Ahithophel advised Absalom and the elders of Israel, and thus and so I have advised. Now, therefore, send quickly and tell David, saying, Do not spend this night in the plains of the wilderness, but speedily cross over, lest the king and all the people who are with him be swallowed up. Now Jonathan and Ahimaaz stayed at Enrogel, for they dared not be seen coming into the city. So a female servant would come and tell them, and they would go and tell King David. Nevertheless, a lad saw them and told Absalom. But both of them went away quickly and came to a man's house in Behurim, who had a well in his court, and they went down into it. Then the woman took and spread a covering over the well's mouth and spread ground grain on it, and the thing was not known. And when Absalom's servants came to the woman at the house, they said, Where are Ahimaaz and Jonathan? They have gone over the water brook. And when they had searched and could not find them, they returned to Jerusalem. Now it came to pass, after they had departed, that they came up out of the well and went and told King David. Arise and cross over the water quickly, for thus has Ahithophel advised against you. So David and all the people who were with him arose and crossed over the Jordan. By morning light, not one of them was left who had not gone over the Jordan. Now when Ahithophel saw that his advice was not followed, he saddled a donkey and arose and went home to his house, to his city. Then he put his household in order and hanged himself and died. And he was buried in his father's tomb. Then David went to Maonaim, and Absalom crossed over the Jordan, he and all the men of Israel with him. And Absalom made Amasa captain of the army instead of Joab. This Amasa was the son of a man whose name was Jithra, an Israelite, who had gone in to Abigail, the daughter of Nahash, sister of Zeruiah, Joab's mother. 
So Israel and Absalom encamped in the land of Gilead. Now it happened when David had come to Maenaim that Shobai, the son of Nahash from Rabbah, of the people of Ammon, Makir, the son of Amiel from Lodiba, and Barzillai, the Gileadite, from Rogalim, brought beds and basins, earthen vessels and wheat, barley and flour, parched grain and beans, lentils and parched seeds, honey and curds, sheep and cheese of the herd, for David and the people who were with him to eat. For they said, The people are hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness. Verses 24 through 29, after crossing over to Jordan, David and his men are supported from the kindness of people who provided supplies and food, which really reminds me of Psalms 23. And it is, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And the reason why like that really resonates when I read when I read that part is simply even though in chapter 12 the Lord let Abs um the Lord let David know that it was going to be his own like his own house that was going to go against him right even though that calamity was going to happen and and David understands why it's happening that although yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for you are with me even in chapter 12 even though God says that later on the Lord tells Nathan and, and Nathan tells David, after David commits to his sin, Nathan tells David that the Lord has already put that stuff behind him. He's already put it past him. He's already forgiven him and that David shall not die. Letting David know that the Lord is with him, even though that he may have to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that the Lord is still with David. And it's amazing to know that when in Psalm 23, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. It's amazing to know that it's an, and this is why it's so <laughs> this is why I love the Bible because it always flows together. Like this, like Psalm 23 is a Psalm from David. Like it's a Psalm of David. So this is David even talking about what he's going through now in second Samuel. And we see that as David is going through this stuff that in verses 24 through 29, the Lord still provides, right? It says that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. God is still providing for David. He is still for providing for his house. Even though David went against him, the Lord is still just so merciful and so, it's so amazing. And we also see that, um, that your rod and your staff, they comfort me, right? So no matter what is going on, the Lord is still protecting David too. And we realize that as like Absalom can't get to David. And in chapter 18, we'll, we'll see even more that what I was talking about yesterday, that like, because the Lord has protected David, even though Absalom is going to try to, to try to kill David, it's not going to work in his favor. And we're going to see that the Lord is going to restore his soul and he's going to lead David down the paths of righteousness for his namesake. In chapter 18, David prepares for battle. And David numbered the people who were with him and set captains of thousands and captains of hundreds over them. In verses one through eight, David assigns commanders over his army. And despite his desire to join them in battle, his people actually plead for him to stay back. 
So he does so, but he commanded his commanders to deal gently with Absalom because Absalom is his son. So he wants to show mercy and we'll see how that plays out. Then David sent out one third of the people under the hand of Joab, one third under the hand of Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, Joab's brother, and one third under the hand of Ittai, the Giddite. I also will surely go out with you myself. But the people answered, You shall not go out, for if we flee away, they will not care about us, nor if half of us die will they care about us. But you are worth ten thousand of us now, for you are now more help to us in the city. Whatever seems best to you, I will do. So the king stood beside the gate, and all the people went out by hundreds and by thousands. Now the king had commanded Joab, Abishai, and Ittai, Deal gently for my sake with the young man Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave all the captain's orders concerning Absalom. So the people went out into the field of battle against Israel, and the battle was in the woods of Ephraim. The people of Israel were overthrown there before the servants of David. And a great slaughter of 20,000 took place there that day. For the battle there was scattered over the face of the whole countryside, and the woods devoured more people that day than the sword devoured. In verses 9 through 18, the Bible lets us know that the battle is being taken place in Ephraim, and it's in the woods of Ephraim, and that it is a lot of calamity. A lot of lives are being taken. Over about 20,000 lives have been lost, and that the woods itself has taken more lives than the sword which just lets you know that they're in very harsh environments um, during this battle. And it lets us know that Absalom is caught in the branches of a large oak tree, and he's basically hanging in the branches, and one of the, the servants see him, and instead of killing him, because he remembers what David had said, he remembers David wanting to people, the, wanting them to deal with Absalom gently, he takes it back to Joab, and then Unfortunately, Joab does not acknowledge David's command. He doesn't acknowledge David's commandment. He literally more like ignores David's commandment and he kills Absalom. Then Absalom met the servants of David. Absalom rode on a mule. The mule went under the thick boughs of a great terebinth tree and his head caught in the terebinth. So he was left hanging between heaven and earth, and the mule which was under him went on. Now a certain man saw it and told Joab, I just saw Absalom hanging in a terebinth tree. You just saw him? And why did you not strike him there to the ground? I would have given you ten shekels of silver and a belt. Though I were to receive a thousand shekels of silver in my hand, I would not raise my hand against the king's son. For, in our hearing, the king commanded you, and Abishai, and Idai, saying, Beware, lest anyone touch the young man Absalom. Otherwise, I would have dealt falsely against my own life. For there is nothing hidden from the king, and you yourself would have set yourself against me. I cannot linger with you. And he took three spears in his hand and <coughs> thrust them through Absalom's heart while he was still alive in the midst of the terrible tree. And ten young men who bore Joab's armor surrounded Absalom and struck <coughs> and killed him. So Joab blew the trumpet and the people returned from pursuing Israel. For Joab held back the people, and they took Absalom and cast him into a large pit in the woods, <coughs> and laid a very large heap of stones over him. Then all Israel fled, everyone to his tent.
Now Absalom, in his lifetime, had taken and set up a pillar for himself, which is in the king's valley. For he said, I have no son to keep my name in remembrance. He called the pillar after his own name, and to this day it is called Absalom's Monument. And a little bit after Joab and his armor bearers kill Absalom, they kind of like throw him in a in a ditch and or like in a hole and they kind of like bury him. And there's like messengers and they go run. Right? They kind of run until that. They run to David and they recognize one of the um, messengers and he he's a good man, so he's supposed to deliver good news. And he starts off with saying that he has good news for the king, but not necessarily for his son. And so he tells, David tells him to like stand to the side. Then there's this other messenger and he tells him what happens. And he's like, but what is the news of Absalom? And then he tells him that, and, and I'm paraphrasing, but in other words, he basically says that I wish that every person that has, in other words, I'm paraphrasing, but in other words, he says, I wish anyone who wants to cause ill will to the king be done like that man was done, right? And David is a smart man. He can put two and two together to realize that Absalom has been killed and he begins to grieve. Then Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok said, let me run now and take the news to the king, how the Lord has avenged him of his enemies. And Joab said to him, You shall not take the news this day, for you shall take the news another day. But today you shall take no news, because the king's son is dead. Then Joab said to the Cushite, Go, tell the king what you have seen. So the Cushite bowed himself to Joab and ran. And Ahimaaz, the son of Zadak, said again to Joab, But whatever happens, please let me also run after the Cushite. Why will you run, my son, since you have no news ready? But whatever happens, let me run. Run. Then Ahimaaz ran by way of the plain and outran the Cusha. Now David was sitting between the two gates, and the watchman went up to the roof over the gate to the wall, lifted his eyes and looked, and there was a man running alone. Then the watchman cried out and told the king, and the king said, If he is alone, there is news in his mouth. And he came rapidly and drew near. Then the watchman saw another man running, and the watchman called to the gatekeeper and said, There is another man running alone. He also brings news. I think the running of the first is like the running of Ahimaaz, the son of Zadak. He is a good man and comes with good news. So Ahimaaz called out and said to the king, all is well! Then he bowed down with his face to the earth before the king. Blessed be the Lord your God, who has delivered up the men who raised their hand against my lord the king. Is the young man Absalom safe? When Joab sent the king's servant and me, your servant, I saw a great tumult. But I did not know what it was about. Turn aside and stand here. So he turned aside and stood still. Just then, the Cushite came. There is good news, my lord the king. For the Lord has avenged you this day of all those who rose against you. Is the young man Absalom safe? May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rise against you to do harm be like that young man. Then the king was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went, he said thus, <laughs> Oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, if only I had died in your place. 
Oh, Absalom, my son, my son. <laughs> oh. But that's all for day 112, and I hope this was a blessing to you. Let me know which part stood out to you. I know I mentioned and I brought up the Psalm of David, Psalm 23, and just kind of how it connects with what we're reading in 2 Samuel and how it goes a little bit deeper too, because he's writing about his feelings. He's writing about those experiences. And as we're reading how he's going through it, I thought it would be interesting to just see like what he's um, writing about. And I know that really stood out to me, just seeing all of the things that God has promised that should come to pass and even God's protection throughout all the stuff and just how obedient David has been and just accepting because we saw um, like in the last reading, we saw how um, when David was being cursed that, that he was accepting of it, knowing that this could be God sending this person here. And so I want to treat him um, in a meek and a kindness way. And I'm not going to use my power or anything like that. So I think it was very interesting um, for me to see that aspect. And it was just something that I never, I didn't even realize the first time I read it, but like, as I went further in, in a study, stuff like that. So that's why it's so important to read the Bible and even reread what you've read because in different points, in different seasons, more things stick out and there's more um, revelation and discernment as you go through it. And it just, as you draw near to God, he draws even nearer to you. So I just lead y'all with that encouragement, but y'all let me know which part stood out to y'all in the comment section and we'll continue the ministry there. I really do appreciate y'all being a part of this. And if you're ready for the next reading, I'll meet you there.